discover the incredible power of five firearms that successfully shot down airplanes in this must-see video. From historical battles to modern conflicts, these weapons have made a significant impact on the outcome of aerial warfare. Watch to learn the fascinating stories behind these guns and their role in taking down planes. Don't miss out on this thrilling and informative video. Military aircraft, such as fighter planes and helicopters, have always played a crucial role in 20th century warfare and continue to do so today. Over time, they have evolved to possess far more devastating firepower and to withstand various types of threats. However, manpads, man-portable air defense systems, have also been developed as anti-aircraft platforms designed to shoot down these aircraft using infrared or radar-guided missiles. Despite these advancements, there are instances where modern anti-aircraft weapons are not needed to bring down a multi-million dollar military aircraft. Although the probability of downing an aircraft with a conventional weapon is extremely low, there are real, documented cases where this has occurred. The common weapons you'll see in this video were not created to shoot down helicopters or combat planes, yet they have managed to do so in a way that seems straight out of a movie or video game. Sit back and get ready to learn about firearms that brought down aircraft. The AK family of weapons is well known worldwide for its tremendous power and battlefield performance. This power comes from its 7.62x39 mm ammunition, one of the most common calibers for such weapons. Although the chances of a relatively low caliber weapon compared to large anti-aircraft cannons, bringing down a military aircraft are minimal, it is theoretically possible. The first indications of this originated in the Vietnam War. The Americans used the UH-1H helicopter, agile for jungle missions, but with very little protection. These helicopters often flew over areas filled with Viet Cong soldiers armed with AK-type weapons, and by instinct, these soldiers would fire at the helicopters. It's surprising to learn that thousands of helicopters were brought down this way during the Vietnam War. A well-documented case occurred on January 12, 1968, when the North Vietnamese initiated bombings against U.S. military installations. One key target was Lima Site 85, a radar station operated by the CIA. The North Vietnamese sent four Antonov AN-2 bombers. Coincidentally, Captain Ted Moore was flying a UH-1H helicopter towards this radar station. Upon arrival, he saw two AN-2s attacking the site and began pursuing one of the bombers. His crewman, Glenn Woods, grabbed an AK-47 and started firing at the bomber's cockpit. After a 20-minute chase, the first bomber crashed on the North Vietnamese border, and the second one crashed into a ridge. The two Americans were credited with destroying the only North Vietnamese plane from a helicopter during the Vietnam War and it was with an AK-47. The feat was so impressive that an artist named Keith Wood painted a work depicting the event. In 1982, during the Battle of San Carlos in the Falklands War, Argentine troops shot down several British Sikorsky helicopters with their FAL combat rifles, which used the same 7.62 millimeter ammunition as the AKs. The last case to mention is the 2003 attack in Karbala, where 29 U.S. AH-64 Apache helicopters were fiercely attacked by Iraqi ground forces. These combat helicopters, heavily armed and well protected, are designed to withstand shots from 50 caliber and 20 millimeter ammunition. During the battle, Lieutenant Jason Quinn, a gunner in one of the Apaches, was hit in the neck by an AKM rifle, causing severe bleeding but never losing consciousness. This forced him to return to base thus neutralizing one of the Apaches. Another helicopter, nicknamed Vampire 12 and piloted by warrant officers Dewey Williams and Ronald Steeshan, was forced to land in a swamp after shots severed the hydraulic system. Attempting to flee the crash site, both swam through a swampy canal but were captured by the enemy. Of the 29 Apaches that returned, 28 were severely damaged, and had they not decided to retreat, they probably would have been shot down. On average, each Apache had 15 to 20 bullet holes, one even had 29 impacts. The moral of these cases is that if enough small caliber bullets are fired at a helicopter or aircraft, it will eventually fall or be forced to withdraw from combat. While AK-type weapons have managed to bring down aircraft, a 50 caliber machine gun has even more potential. 50 caliber bullets can damage sensitive electronic components, engines, rotors, external weapon mounts, landing gear, and other key systems of an aircraft. Although the effective range of a 50 caliber round is about a kilometer, making it unlikely to hit a moving aircraft. There have been cases where these machine guns have brought down planes. During World War II, the Browning M2 machine gun was responsible for shooting down hundreds of enemy aircraft. Similarly, the Soviet 12.7 mm DSHK machine gun, equivalent to a 50 caliber, has been used in Iraq and Afghanistan to bring down helicopters. In the Vietnam War, ground fire rather than surface-to-air missiles accounted for most helicopter shootdowns. It is estimated that about 5,500 helicopters and 2,000 fixed-wing aircraft were downed by machine gun and assault rifle fire. 
Even the Irish Republican Army used a DSHK to shoot down a British Army Westland Lynx helicopter in 1988, firing 300 rounds with two heavy machine guns and three automatic rifles. But incredibly, it has happened. Barrett 50 caliber sniper rifles are designed to penetrate vehicles, walls, doors, and certain armored vehicles. Therefore, they are capable of taking down tanks, military aircraft, and even helicopters. This was demonstrated on September 6, 2016, in La Huacana, Michoacan, Mexico, where members of the criminal organization known as Los Caballeros Templarios shot down a police helicopter patrolling the area from a hill using a Barrett M82 50 caliber sniper rifle. During the incident, the pilot and three police officers were killed, while another officer was severely injured. Ronnie Barrett, the weapon's creator, noted in his early promotional brochures in the late 80s and early 90s that his weapon could destroy vehicles and multi-million dollar aircraft using just $2 ammunition. The M82A1 model's precision makes it possible to place shots in the most vulnerable spots of a ground vehicle or aircraft. The compression sections of jet engines or helicopter transmissions are likely targets for the weapon. Another expert, British military sniper Mark Spicer, wrote about the vulnerability of military helicopters in his book, Sniper the Techniques and Equipment of the Deadly Marksman. Spicer said helicopters are notoriously easy to neutralize or destroy using incendiary ammunition mentioning that a helicopter can be disabled with a well-placed shot in its engine or rotor area. While this is different when the aircraft is moving quickly, it has happened. We said we wouldn't touch on guided missiles or anti-aircraft systems, but the RPG doesn't fall into those categories. In fact, many authors describe its mission as a rocket-propelled grenade. Additionally, the RPG is not guided by infrared or other systems. Its warhead only goes where the shooter aims, just like with an assault rifle. The most widely publicized and famous case of an RPG bringing down an aircraft is the downing of two Black Hawk helicopters in Mogadishu, Somalia, in October 1993. A battle that inspired one of the most iconic war movies of all time, Black Hawk Down. The RPG is popular among irregular forces, guerrillas, and some extremist organizations. The weapon was originally designed to destroy moving tanks at a maximum speed of 80 kilometers per hour. Most aircraft fly at double or triple that speed, so several RPGs are usually fired at once to increase the likelihood of hitting an aircraft. Firing this weapon is so simple that a child can learn to use it in minutes. The Mujahideen shot down Soviet helicopters with RPGs in Afghanistan, and the same has happened in Somalia, Vietnam, and Mexico. On May 1, 2015, the Jalisco New Generation Cartel carried out a series of attacks to prevent the capture of their leader, Nemesio Oseguera Cervantes, aka El Mencho. A military and police operation began early in Jalisco, deploying four Air Force and Federal Police helicopters. They spotted a cartel convoy on the highway. One of the helicopters was flying over the convoy, and as if it were a movie, one of the cartel members leaned out of a moving vehicle window with an RPG-type weapon and began firing at the aircraft. A Cougar EC-725 helicopter carrying 18 passengers, including special forces and police, was hit in its tail by a rocket. Subsequently, the helicopter spun several times in the air while trying to maneuver back to its course, then crashed and exploded. Nine law enforcement officers lost their lives as a result of the attack, and many others were injured. This was the first time in Mexico's history that a military helicopter was shot down by a cartel. Additionally, on August 6, 2011, a U.S. military Boeing CH-47 Chinook helicopter was shot down while transporting a rapid action unit to support the 75th Ranger Regiment in Wardak Province, Afghanistan. Around 2.38 a.m., the helicopter was attacked by a previously undetected group of Taliban, who fired two to three RPG rounds from a two-story building. The second round struck one of the helicopter's three rear rotor blades, and the resulting explosion destroyed the rotor assembly causing the helicopter to crash in less than five seconds, killing all occupants. Of the 30 Americans who perished, 22 were SEALs, including 15 operators from SEAL Team 6, the unit that conducted the raid that ended with bin Laden in Pakistan. This August 6th attack was the most devastating day in SEAL Team 6's history, and the largest loss of life for U.S. forces since the start of the war in Afghanistan in October 2001. The American Association of Defense Industries, noted in a report that 40% of aircraft shot down in military operations in the Iraq war were due to RPG-type weapons, an impressive figure. The challenge of RPG countermeasures is complicated by their typically short ranges and short reaction times. For example, man pads or guided missiles can exceed 5 kilometers, and a guided missile will take about 3 seconds to impact a helicopter. But fired from a rooftop 80 meters away, an unguided RPG will hit in less than a second without the pilot receiving an alert making it nearly impossible to dodge at close range. 
One of the most impressive stories from World War II is that of a military aircraft shot down in the sky with a Colt M1911 pistol. Owen J. Baggett, a second lieutenant in the U.S. Army Air Force's 7th Bomb Group, performed an incredible feat. While flying to his target, his plane was intercepted by Japanese fighters. Baggett's plane sustained heavy damage to its fuel tanks, and the crew was forced to bail out. While descending by parachute, the Japanese fighters began shooting at them. Baggett was wounded in the arm but decided to play dead. When one of the Japanese pilots slowed down and opened the canopy for a better look, Baggett raised his pistol and fired four times, killing the Japanese pilot and bringing down his fighter. Baggett was captured by the Burmese and handed over to the Japanese, imprisoned in Singapore as a POW for over two years before being rescued. Baggett returned to his country, rose to the rank of colonel and lived a long life, passing away in 2006 at the age of 85. That's all for now. I hope you enjoyed this information. Subscribe and share this video to help grow this community. Have a great day!